Good morning, everyone. Deputy Prime Minister, Mr. Heng Sui Kiat, Chairman of the Council of Presidential Advisors, Mr. Eddie Thieu, Dean of the Lee Kuan New School of Public Policy, Mr. Danny Kua, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Some years ago, IPS fellows decided to focus on four areas of research. One, diversity. Two, aging. Three, income inequality. And four, the governance of a city-state. As part of its focus on the fourth area, IPS has returned over and over again to the question of politics, the science or study of government and the state, to use one of the many definitions of the word in the OED. Significantly, if we examine the deep history of the word, we will find that it comes from the Greek polities, or citizen. And polities, in turn, comes from another Greek word, polis, or city. Fortuitously or not, we might thus say that politics, from time immemorial, has, that has been the particular concern of citizens of city-states. And Singapore, being about the only successor in the modern era to the Greek city-states, is of course naturally concerned about politics. It is of great moment to us as citizens of a city-state how we are governed. The topic is of course very timely. The organizers of this year's Singapore Perspective settled upon it for that reason. Another reason is that next year, 2021, will be the 10th anniversary of PRISM, a scenario planning exercise that we embarked upon in 2011 on the question, how will Singapore govern itself in 2022? It was one of the most ambitious projects that IPS has ever embarked on. More than 140 people from seven key sectors of society, from corporate sector leaders to public intellectuals, from the public service to civil society, were asked to develop scenarios of Singapore's possible political trajectories from 2011 to 2022. Once developed, the various scenarios were imaginatively presented at an exhibition curated by Drama Box and Mr. Kok Heng Luen. Heng Luen. I'll do no more than recall here the three scenarios that were finally selected. The first was called Singa Saw. Singa as in the lion, store as in the place where you buy things from. This scenario, to quote, was a pro-business, high-growth world that the public trusts, which invests in people and endeavors that have the highest potential to create economic value. The question was how socially sustainable it would be. The second scenario was called Singa Gibbs, as in gift things, Singa Gibbs. And this was a pro-Singaporean scenario where the public trusts a new government and elected president to implement an egalitarian policy framework that is supported through the use of the national reserves. The question here was how fiscally sustainable it would be. And the third scenario was called WikiCity, Wiki as in Wikipedia, WikiCity, a proactive scenario where a new coalition government is elected to trim the role of the state because of citizens' low trust in government, which allows for self-organizing communities to emerge and meet the daily needs of the people. The question here was how politically sustainable it would be. I leave it to you to judge how prescient the 140 PRISM participants were. Possibly the scenarios say more about their state of mind in 2011-2012 than they do of the future, which is now almost present. Undeterred nevertheless, we will embark on yet another scenario planning exercise, a sort of PRISM 2 soon. How will Singapore govern itself in 2032? This conference, we hope, will suggest profitable lines of inquiry. Despite the season, this conference is not meant to be a GE forum. Other bodies affiliated to the university are organizing such forums. 
But naturally, we invited the leader of the parliamentary opposition to speak at this conference. He declined, though we hoped to have him on another occasion. About a third of you at this conference come from the public service, another third from the private sector, and yet another third from the schools, academia, and civil society, including many political parties. Before I invite the Deputy Prime Minister to address us, let me briefly state the ground rules for this conference. These are Tommy's rules, we call them. IPS, as you all know, is the house that Tommy built. He is a very kindly man, a loving critic, as he describes himself, but he's also a stickler for some things. One, keep time. When the bell sounds, stop. Two, keep your questions or comments short and sharp and to the point. This is so as many people as possible can speak. And three, you're encouraged to disagree, dispute, challenge. But you're also enjoined not to be disagreeable. It is my honor now to invite the Deputy Prime Minister to speak to us. Following his speech, he will answer questions for about an hour or so. Mr. Heng, 